Support the channel on patreon.com slash manlightfoot. If this isn't the poster shot, someone's getting fired. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. You ever wonder what the Ninja Turtles would look like if they had an insanely good budget? Well, Rise of the Ninja Turtles the movie answers that question. This was something that's been highly anticipated since the end of season 2 of the series, which I'm still not over Nickelodeon for pausing that, but that's besides the point. There was a wave of people riding high from the finale with all the hardcore action it had, so this movie had a lot to live up to, especially with the delays that kept happening to it. But after getting to see it early due to Netflix supplying me with screeners, I can definitely say this movie lives up to the hype. There will be some spoilers up ahead for anyone who doesn't want to know anything about this movie going into it. I won't give too much detail away, but if you just want my general thoughts on it, here you go. My main thoughts are it's an absolutely great film with good emotional character moments and points of growth as well as very funny moments and orgasmic levels of action that you just have to see to believe. It is definitely a must see. Now, if you want some more in depth details, here you go. The story revolves around the future being taken over by this familiar alien race called the Krang. Leo and a team called Casey Jones have a plan to go back in the past and stop the Krang from making it out of a dimension they were imprisoned in. The only thing is, Casey is the one to make it to the past to warn the present day turtles of the destroyed world in their future as Leo and the rest stay behind to allow him to get through. But it's too late and now the turtles must find a way to stop the Krang before they can take over the world. This movie sets a strong first impression with how it starts by showing this destroyed future and makes it abundantly clear the situation gets pretty bad and they're on their last leg. We even see moments that kind of make you think, is this a really serious type of movie? Like, oh boy, they are actually pulling out the stops with this one. It really sets the tone for this is going to be a very serious story. It very much shows that things can go wrong for the Turtles. It follows directly after the season two finale with Leo now being the leader and the team clearly having to go through some growing pains. While they're definitely better than they were at the start of the series, they're in a new dynamic that they need to get used to. And plus, they have to do this without relying on their new mystic powers that they got at the end of the series. It really puts them on their game to keep a strong level of suspense. This goes double for Leo. He was pretty much a major goofball and here he still keeps that attitude, but it actually gets him in trouble and causes a problem for the family. This movie really puts Leonardo to the test with him having to prove that he really is a worthy leader. Now for all those that thought he wasn't as great as previous iterations, this one makes a strong case for him and pretty much tells everyone to just shut up. This feels more closer to the Leo people were used to while still retaining that seasoning that made him unique. Now, don't get it twisted and think they skimp out on the rest of the group. Everyone else is in top form and getting great laughs as well as good emotional moments. That's one of the great things the series strived on and the movie is no exception here. Raphael has to basically try to keep Leo and the team together, even though he's not the leader anymore. You do get that big brother energy from him that we saw in the series and it works very well for this new dynamic he's in. You would think he'd be super jealous or resentful for having his title usurped, but he still takes his job as the oldest seriously and just wants what's best for his family without being a jerk about it. It's very commendable on his front and it's the most mature we've seen Raphael be in most iterations, honestly. Usually he's just a plain hothead and sometimes he learns to just kind of chill out, but here it's like he takes the role of leader seriously and just wants his brother to actually take that role seriously too. It's very commendable on his part. Donnie and Mikey are great and honestly work as a fun duo that we saw before. They both get great standout moments that plays more into who they are by the end of the season 2 finale. It's just honestly great to see Donnie again being so cynical as always, but he also gets some fun moments where he has to really prove himself as a hero and sacrifice himself and his own safety just for his brothers. And Mikey brings along that little brother energy while still clearly wanting to prove himself as a great hero as well because he now has to try to make sure he can understand his mystic powers to the best of his ability. It honestly just shows the growth of these characters and their brotherly bonds with how they have to interact with each other and how they have to save each other throughout this whole situation. It's just a perfect example of how the turtles are brothers and how they do care for each other. 
Now Splinter here does take a smidge of a back seat, but he's still that goofball dad with wise words to say. He does get a lot of good laughs, but he does feel more serious about the role of being the mentor, but he still feels like a dad. He gets good moments of being a good dad, which is always great to see, and I'm just always happy to see him more as that role, rather than just, he's the sensei and they all respect him, and I always like it when they just call him dad. It's like, come on, it's Splinter. He's your dad. April is as lovable as ever, and they play into that journalistic side she's had since the 80s series. I always enjoy whenever they allow April to just be more than just the sidekick or just the damsel in distress or something like that. She just has fun moments and she kicks butt too. Like, come on. I always love it when that happens with her. And what is great is everyone plays a good role in the story and doesn't feel like they have no purpose. This even goes for the future Casey Jones. He does kind of have that Terminator slash trunks from dbz plot going for him but it has a strong spin to it here you get him having that great sense of respect for his heroes particularly leo but he finds out that leo was a major screw up and has a somewhat of a chewing out moment that even builds on leo learning more about being a leader it honestly is just a great moment for him because he's now realizing dang i am not doing the best i can i am screwing things up and it's starting to hurt my family it's just great growth that really shows the depth that this show could get into. Now of course a good Turtles movie is not without its great villains. The Krang are very menacing in this iteration. They're just these three siblings that rule all of them but honestly it's all you need with them. They have this very threatening aura to them that makes you say put some respect on it. And I tell you now they are brutal with how they do things here. They don't just have an invading army. No. They have this hive mind thing that takes over and corrupts people. It's pretty horrifying with how they do it. They pretty much turn people into these mutated zombies and can make it squeamish with how disturbing they can look. Definitely helps put this movie above other TMNT affairs. Like if you thought TMNT can never get kind of disturbing with their imagery, they actually managed to pull it off. And there is that great sense of peril that runs throughout the whole thing. And honestly, it plays into somewhat of the brutality this movie can get into. Like they don't explicitly show blood, but there is very much heavy implications of it or small amounts of it at least like you will think oh okay the situation is real like we got to take this seriously it really does give you that feeling that they upped their ante this time around what else can be said about the animation it is absolute sex it's a great evolution from the series and it lets you feel the weight of the story and god do they pop off with the fights it's so masterfully smooth and gorgeous and just adds that good old kick butt flavor that the show is known for. There honestly is just a great sense of the line weight and the way the characters are moving and everything. It's just a marvel to look at. You just really think, wow, this really is the absolute best the turtles can look, honestly. I've said it so many times in different videos talking about this show, but man, they really were pulling out the stops with this movie. You will never not be impressed by the great fight scenes they have in this, and the emotional scenes are elevated too. There's just this feeling of dread that can get to you as you see things falling apart for the characters. It's a great example of the animation pushing the emotions really you will feel the weight of these characters when they're at their lowest point now honestly i can't say if there's anything wrong with this movie other than one or two characters not showing up which might be on your mind considering how the season two finale went but other than that everything just comes across so well it works for those who very much enjoyed the rise series and can work for those that just want some damn good tmnt content it hits on the emotional level that the series was able to do and does it strongly the animation is so amazing and just a marvel to see the characters are in top form and the stakes are very high and leaves you on the edge of your seat there's been some say about if this movie does well that the series could return so i definitely say watch it as much as you can and tell your friends about it when it drops i want to say thanks to netflix for the early screeners to this movie if you've been clamoring for some grade A Turtles action and a great story, then Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie is one shell of a watch.